What can we learn about teaching by analyzing nine different episodes of educational TV that all cover the same scientific concept? Camouflage. Let's begin by watching the first time the word camouflage is used in each episode. Here are the two shows that do it best. I've read about this in my nature book. Some animals hide by looking like the things around them. It's called camouflage. We need to find these camouflaged fish. Camouflage? Yes, camouflaged. That's when animals look like what's around them, so they can hide. Oh, great. With those two exemplars in mind, can you pick out why the next three clips are not as good? You know, there's a special word for when a creature can use their body's colors to blend into the environment around them. It's called camouflage. Camouflage is blending in with something. Blending in so no one can see you. Now that is what I call good hiding. Yep, I blend right in thanks to my camouflage. Camo what? Camouflage. See? Huh? Uh, uh. Oh. Hey, are you disappearing? No, just blending in with my surroundings. All part of the camouflage. Cool. They all use the phrase blend in. The problem is that children who don't know the word camouflage are also unlikely to know that unclear prepositional idiom. A child may hear blend in and think, huh, like put it in a blender? Why is this next definition incomplete? Miss Frizzle, how did you hide like that? Camouflage, Keisha. It's how some critters hide from other critters that are out to get them. Fiona Frizzle states the purpose of camouflage, but not the mechanism. She doesn't mention color at all. Why is the next definition imprecise? Mimi is an octopus that can camouflage. Oh, camouflage? Camouflage means she can change her color to look like other things. It's so amazing! The seahorse states that camouflage involves changing color. What he's actually describing is active camouflage, a rare subtype of the much larger phenomenon. In all the previous clips, a character who knows the meaning of camouflage explicitly teaches it to another character who does not. The character who learns the word stands in for the viewers at home, who are also presumed to be learning the word for the first time. This next clip is a bit different. Now what? We camouflage the bolt so it blends in with the environment. Then we wait for the bog beast. Carlos is not giving a vocabulary lesson. He is using the word camouflage in context, seeming to assume that Wanda and the others have heard it before. Rightly or wrongly, the Magic School Bus makes the same assumption about its audience. That might be fine, since the show is intended for older children. Importantly, the topic of this episode is not camouflage per se, but the various ways that butterflies evade predators. They're not wimps. They trick you, hide from you, even scare you. That's how they stay alive. This scene is meant to awaken the viewer's prior knowledge about camouflage in preparation for later scenes about how butterflies specifically use camouflage. There it is, I think. Wow, what a disappearing act. It's camouflaged, so you can't see it against the log. Ah, oh, another illustrious illusion, Tim. As I always say, if they can't see you, <laughs> they can't eat you. Similarly, this next clip is from an episode of The Cat in the Hat Knows a Lot About That that's about the various ways that coral reef creatures evade predators. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I hate prickly food. Yuck. <laughs> It's not the show's camouflage episode. We saw a clip from that already. See if you notice a glaring omission in this clip. <gasps> He's gone! Former search party! File a missing squid report! <laughs> Cat, I'm still here. I get it. You can change color. Cool. It makes you really hard to see. 
This episode does not use the word camouflage at all. Presumably, the writers wanted to include the concept without assuming that all viewers saw the older camouflage episode. The problem is that human memory relies on vocabulary, like a jailer relies on his jingle jangle key ring. Each word unlocks a cell. In the absence of the word camouflage, viewers who have seen the older episode are unlikely to connect this new scene to their previous learning, while viewers who did not see the older episode are unlikely to retain this unnamed new concept. Repetition. To quote John Wooden, the eight laws of learning are explanation, demonstration, imitation, repetition, 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 repetition. The camouflage episode of The Cat in the Hat knows a lot about that, uses the word camouflage eight times, and so does the Eleanor Wonders Why episode. They are tied for second. Dinosaur Train is in a league of its own. It's called camouflage. Camouflage? Can we go in a dinosaur train and ask him about camouflage? I'll take these two camouflage investigators to the train. Yeah, camouflage! He used camouflage. That's a big new word Mom taught us. I do know about camouflage. And that is camouflage. Camouflage. Are there any dinosaurs who use camouflage? Best ever at using camouflage. Using camouflage. Good luck finding that camouflage Lesotosaurus family. But they're camouflaged. No camouflage dinosaurs up here. Maybe the Lesotosaurus are so good at using camouflage that we've already searched where they're hiding. Really good camouflage, Leslie. I guess I'm not very good at using camouflage. All well, this dinosaur is using camouflage. What's camouflage? Well, an animal is camouflaged when it blends in with its surroundings. We don't know for sure if Lesotosaurus had camouflage coloring. Lots of animals living today use camouflage. Pretty amazing camouflage, huh? Uh, now the kids are using camouflage. Viewers of Dinosaur Train learn the key vocabulary. Metaphor. It's sound teaching to relate a new topic to something the students are already familiar with. Four of the camouflage episodes preface the lesson by showing characters playing hide-and-go-seek. I know. Let's play hide-and-seek. Ready or not, here I come. Ready or not, here I come. Extreme hide-and-seek. The shows vary, though, in how aptly they relate the lesson of camouflage back to hide-and-go-seek after they've taught it. The cat in the hat is simple but effective. Wow, I can't see them at all. That camouflage is really good. <laughs> Ooh, listen to that. Giggling bushes. <laughs> Found you! <laughs> How did you hide so well? The magic school bus rides again is ludicrously complex, but also effective. See if you can spot the subtle way in which the metaphor is less aptly handled in Eleanor Wonders Why. Where are they? I don't know. We've usually found them by now. They're hiding much better this time. Come out, come out, wherever you are. We give up, you win. Here we are. Ah! Right in front of you. But how? <laughs> We used camouflage to hide in plain sight. We found hiding spots that look just like us. In the other clips, the characters change their appearance to match where they are playing hide-and-go-seek. Just like real animals evolve to resemble their habitat. Eleanor, Olive, and Ari, though, do not change their appearance. Rather, they find hiding spots that match how they already look. The evolutionary equivalent would be a species shifting to a different habitat to match the coloration it already happens to have. That's not the way it generally goes. Like in the other clips, though, Eleanor and her friends apply their newfound knowledge about camouflage to improve at hide-and-go-seek. Dinosaur Train takes its plot in a totally different direction. Buddy does briefly play hide-and-go-seek again, but just to show that T-Rexes don't camouflage because they're too big, and in Buddy's case, neon orange. How about this 
for camouflage. Wow, is that the bush or buddy I'm looking at? I guess it's a T-Rex bush. <laughs> <laughs> good one, Leslie. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm not very good at using camouflage. Nothing like you, Leslie, but I'm good at being a T-Rex. The main plot of the episode, though, shifts away from hide-and-go-seek and camouflage in favor of a socio-emotional lesson about shyness. The new metaphor is that shy children may hide from strangers, just like prey animals hide from predators. Lesotosaurus only usually hide from predators, but Leslie likes to hide from everyone. How do you do it, Tiny? How is it so easy for you to talk to other creatures and not be afraid? Metaphors have value, but they're no substitute for a wealth of concrete examples. A lesson on camouflage should showcase a menagerie of camouflaging animals. I wonder if anything else around here is camouflaged. There's only one way to find out. We need more observations. Whoa, look, it's a toad. It was hidden in that pile of sticks. Cool. Look at your beautiful brown and gray feathers. They're the same color as the tree. The Cat in the Hat episode really suffers by only showing a single camouflaging gecko. Gecko! Looking for me? I appreciate the dinosaur train shows actual photos. This real frog shows the idea of camouflage a lot more effectively than this animated one from the Magic School Bus. Huh? Dinosaur Train was able to show actual photos because every episode ends with a live action segment featuring Dr. Scott, the paleontologist. A lot of educational shows have a special segment at the end. Magic School Bus! Magic School Bus! Magic, Magic School, school bus. bus! And they're wonderful. They can allow the writers to review the topic they have taught in the main narrative, but to approach it in a different way, with a different context. After the Eleanor Wonders Why Hide and Go Seek narrative, an after segment describes the active camouflage of cephalopods. Today, we are going to learn about an animal that plays hide and seek. Wait for it. <laughs> Under the water! Oh. Sometimes the octopus needs to hide to stay safe. The octopus can change the color of its skin to look like the things around it. Whoa! Where did Miss Mole go? She was just here. Huh? Aha! Here I am! Wow! Yay! I included the Curious George episode The Color of Monkey in this analysis solely on the strength of its after segment. The main narrative is not actually about camouflage at all. It's about color mixing. <laughs> George, you're yellow! <laughs> George thought if yellow and blue made green, and red and blue made purple, maybe he could find what colors made brown and dye himself back to normal. George, no! <laughs> Camouflage occurs within the main narrative, but is not named. Where is it? I don't see it. in town and he's monkey colored usually oh no hmm. no George oh at the end though we're treated to this awesome after segment George is a monkey so he can do things we can't do he turned himself orange we are making ourselves lots of colors we're going to use the paper. We're going to cut out suits that we're going to paint. Camouflage is blending in with something. Blending in so no one can see you. Animals do it to protect them from predators, but people can do it. This is a red brick wall that I'm going to try to camouflage myself to blend in. This is where I'm going to try to blend in. I'm going to try to blend into this fence. I'm painting the posts and trying not to get it into the, where the sun cracks are. Uh, my thing fell. 
it got wood chips all over it. So it looks like wood, which is pretty good. It really blends in. I think you did the bricks perfectly. It's really good camouflage. Oh, I think it really blends in. It's especially brilliant that the after segment, while mostly about camouflage, also ties back to color mixing. To do good camouflage, you've got to mix the colors so they look right. A little bit of blue, yellow, and red to get brown. And you've got to test it. This one right here matches better because it's more red. The lesson for teachers to take from after segments is to return to previous topics but address them with a new perspective. Students need to generalize their understanding of a concept beyond a single context. Episodes of Blue's Clues have an overarching structure of three clues to solve a puzzle, but they are interspersed with tangentially related segments, including each episode's skidoo. In both the original and reboot episodes I included in this analysis, camouflage is only the topic of a standalone skidoo. I think that's a pity, because, as we've seen, it's an interesting enough topic to warrant an entire episode. In conclusion, great educational TV is a blueprint for great teaching. Define terms clearly, and use them repeatedly. Illustrate concepts with both metaphors and multiple concrete examples. Return to concepts within multiple contexts. All of the episodes in this analysis have strengths and weaknesses, but if you want me to pick the one show that taught camouflage best, it's Dinosaur Train. Best ever at using camouflage. Second prize to Eleanor Wonders Why. That's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs>